Thomas A. Edison said, the airplane will be only half invented until the day it can take off and land without runways. This tri-service XC-142A is capable of doing just that. But to take off and land without runways is only one of the many requirements of this aircraft. The XC-142A is the largest aircraft of its type in the world, undergoing full-scale development tests. It is 58 feet long, 26 feet high, with a wingspan of nearly 68 feet. Four General Electric T-64 engines power lightweight 16-foot propellers. LTV Aerospace Corporation, with Hiller Aircraft and Ryan Aeronautical as principal subcontractors, was selected by the Department of Defense in September 1961 to design, manufacture, and test five of these V-Stall tilt-wing aircraft. Basic design was started in January 1962. Within a period of 33 months, the design was completed, the first XE-142A was fabricated, ground tested, and flown. The first flight of the XE-142A signaled the beginning of Category 1 tests. In July 1965, while Category 1 tests continued at the contractor's facility, the Air Force accepted delivery of the first aircraft. The remaining four aircraft have been delivered to the Air Force since that time. This is Colonel Jesse Jacobs, test director of the Tri-Service XC-142 V-Stall program. Operational suitability testing began here at Edwards Air Force Base in the fall of 1965. Since that time, many test hours have been logged. These tests were flown at several locations in the state of California and offshore in the Pacific Ocean. In earliest tests at and around Edwards, Low stole passes and hovers were made over Rosamond Lake. Hovers were made over rubberized forward area landing mats. Then tests on raw desert with about three inches of loose sand and a firm subsurface. No attempt was made to clean up the area or remove any debris from the site. During stole takeoffs, ingestion was minimized if the wing angle was limited to 25 degrees or less. During vertical takeoffs, dust obscured the aircraft from ground observers. However, the pilot maintained visual contact with the ground at all times. Although recirculation of loose sand and dirt was evident, proper maintenance and cleaning of inlet filters and screens was sufficient to minimize ingestion effects. Following these tests at Edwards, the aircraft was flown to Point Magoo in February 1966. Off runway side tests were conducted here. During stole landings and takeoffs in sand, deep ruts were made by the main gear. During taxi, following one of the landings, the nose wheel dropped into one of these ruts made during a previous landing. The wheel buried up to the doors. Unable to move forward, the aircraft took off vertically, freeing itself from the rut. While the aircraft was at Point Magoo, over 120 minutes of total hover time were recorded. The longest single hover was 21 minutes. The aircraft was flown from Edwards Air Force Base 
to the Marine Corps Station at 29 Palms. Here, three types of forward area landing mats were evaluated. Pierced aluminum, pierced steel, and solid aluminum planking. El Centro was the site for cargo and paradrop testing. This extraction drop of a 3,000 pound container was from 5,000 feet. Speed of the 142 was 125 knots. The load exited smoothly. As the load moved aft, the nose of the aircraft pitched up approximately one degree, but was easily corrected by the pilot. For gravity drops, the aircraft was trimmed to a five degree nose up attitude. The 2,070 pounds load was dropped at 65 knots from 5,000 feet. As the load exited, the aircraft was easily trimmed. Load rollout and chute deployment were good. When making this 3,000 pound dump truck drop while the aircraft was hovering, a nose up attitude of nine degrees was required. The pilot felt the load move out and counteracted the trim with the control system. Dump trucking a 3,100 pound load from 10 feet at 32 knots caused no appreciable reaction to the aircraft. Four 1,000 pound containers were dump truck dropped from 10 feet. The 142 airspeed was 32 knots with a nose up attitude between five and six degrees. Aircraft control was good. The containers came to rest a maximum distance of 33 feet apart. After a series of successful dummy drops were made through the escape hatch, 10 paratroopers jumped from the rear cargo door. The aircraft was at 10,000 feet and 65 knots airspeed. There was no interference from the tail prop. Even at air speeds as high as 80 knots with the cargo doors open, airflow did not inhibit the movement of personnel in the cargo compartment. On May the 18th, 1966, the XC-142 made its initial carry operation from the USS Bennington. Over 50 vertical and stole takeoffs and landings were made with winds over the deck varying from 10 to 35 knots. Higher winds, ground roll, and stole takeoffs and landings was less than 100 feet. On deck maneuvers, including 180 degree turns, were easily accomplished. All landings and takeoffs used less than half the angle deck space. The effect of varying combinations of temperature and altitude were studied at Lake Tahoe and Bishop, California. Altitude at Bishop was a little over 4,000 feet. The aircraft was loaded to gross weights ranging from 37,000 to 41,500 pounds. Vertical lift and stow lifting capabilities were studied at various temperatures, pressures, and altitudes. At Lake Tahoe, surface altitude was approximately 6,300 feet. Vertical lift and stow lifting capabilities were also studied under various weights, temperatures, pressures, and altitudes. After accomplishing several dummy pickups from over land and water, the first live retrieval was made in October 1966 when a trained frogman was lifted from a life raft. The pickup was made from a hover altitude of about 125 feet. No problems were encountered from propeller downwash. Tests indicated that rescue could be accomplished through both the forward escape hatch and over the rear end. In November and December 1966, the aircraft was operated successfully from the amphibious transport dock, the USS Ogden, and from the aircraft carrier Yorktown. On the Ogden, both conversions and reconversions were made at different angles to the ship. 
360 degree taxi turns were easily accomplished on the 80 by 200 foot landing pad. Eight vertical takeoffs and landings were successfully accomplished. On the Yorktown, with a wind over the deck of 15 knots, stow landings and takeoffs were made in the length of the flight deck without maneuvering the aircraft back to takeoff position. In October 1966, an assault demonstration was held at Edwards Air Force Base. Three XC-142s were used in this demonstration. The three-day demonstration was witnessed by more than 150 military and civilian observers. Number five airplane conducted a maximum performance capability demonstration at the south base. Gross weight was 33,000 pounds. Free air temperature was 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Pressure altitude was 2,315 feet. Included in this demonstration were a conventional takeoff with a climb to 25,000 feet in five minutes and 40 seconds. The XC-142 executed a vertice circuit, that is, a vertical liftoff to hover, a conversion to conventional flight, and reconversion to hover and vertical landing. demonstration of tactical capabilities. Two of the aircraft performed simultaneous stole landings on short slope strips. takeoffs from the dual strips were also demonstrated. Four 1,000-pound A-22 containers were gravity dropped from an altitude of 325 feet using quick opening chutes. Next, an assault landing capability was demonstrated. A Jeep and a 106 millimeter recoilless rifle weighing 3,500 pounds were unloaded. Infield maneuvers were demonstrated.
Pass, another assault landing demonstration was made. Two 3,500-pound liquid transporters were unloaded. pound containers were dropped dump truck fashion demonstrating precision delivery of supplies. rescue was performed. Then as part of the final assault landing, a payload of 10,500 pounds was offloaded, a three-quarter ton truck towing a 105 millimeter howitzer. The demonstration was taxi maneuverability followed by a vertical takeoff and conversion to forward flight. judged to be completely successful with all mission objectives accomplished. A major portion of operational suitability testing was demonstrated, but Category 2 testing will continue through late 1967.